All right, welcome back again to another episode of The Contrarians. This is one of our special concept things where we build we build a worst album by a band. We've done this for Kiss and Rainbow and possibly some others. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a fun, uh, a fun situation. Jamie and I have been planning on doing this one for quite a while. So yes, I have Jamie Laszlo here helping me out. Uh, obviously, he's got the, got the beautiful setup once again. I love when Jamie does that. It's very cool. Um, and we're going to be talking about Van Halen, but we're only going to be talking about David Lee Roth era Van Halen. Um, you know, I tried to come up with some snappy titles uh, for this for Marco to put in the thing, but I think Jamie's crying would be, uh, would be pretty much the best uh, way to go for this episode so yeah we'll, we'll call this one jamie's crying <laughs> um, if i had to listen to our albums that we're about to make i would probably cry exactly exactly so um so yeah so the concept is is uh we we both got um given the task of uh, creating one side of music each to come up with uh with an old school uh you know vinyl piece of uh horribleness uh from from the band and and this is van halen so uh so yeah jamie i'll turn it over to you what do you think uh g- give me give me your five songs for side one of uh of jamie's crying well this is for day de- uh the david era and we are going to do another show with the sammy era exactly yeah so uh you came up with marco jamie's crying as you can see i have their greatest hits behind me the best of both worlds so since we're doing Sammy and David, I'm going to call it the worst. Yes, that's pretty good. That's worlds. pretty good. I, I I thought of that too. And then I also thought of a couple others for that one. What what did I have here? For Awful Carnal Knowledge. Ah, that's pretty good. And, uh, and Oh, You Hate One Too. Oh, see, <laughs> you guys are doing good work. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, for David, uh, first of all, Van Halen, probably my favorite favorite band to play during the summertime it doesn't even come close yeah uh and for i found for david lee roth picking a a worst of was a little tough because for me there's not a lot of crap out there uh i thought i would have a lot of uh songs from uh, a different kind of truth that's what it's called right a different kind, yeah but only one showed up so and i tried not to go for low-hanging fruits but I think I, I picked a few along the way. Starting with Big Bad Bill is Sweet William Now. Okay. A 1924 song by Margaret Young covered by everyone from Bill Murray to Peggy Lee to Leon Redbone and then Van Halen. I didn't think that would hold Martin. <laughs> Cheap tape. Um, yeah, it, 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 you got Alex and Eddie's uh, dad playing the clarinet on it. Look. And they were all lined up in a row, I think, when they were recording it. So I read. I'm sure they had a ball recording this song. I'm sure it's fun. I'm happy that it exists, that you got Papa Van Halen on there. He's doing a cl- clarinet solo for crying out loud. It's great. You got David hamming it up. But do I want to hear it? I mean, is this anyone's, one of anyone's favorite David Lee Roth era Van Halen songs. I doubt anyone would put it in their top 10, 20, or 30. But, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I just, it's low on my list. Then I'm going with track two, Tattoo. Now, here's the thing with this song. I know it got a a lot of hate when it was released. Like, everyone was like, yes, Van Halen's back with David Lee. Ooh, this is the song we get, the lead-off single. Uh, it, it's not the worst sounding song uh, in the verses, but that tattoo tattoo chorus just brings the whole thing down. Tattoo tattoo, and when they're not doing that, you're kind of sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for it to happen again. And while you're waiting for that and kind of cringing for that moment, you're not really enjoying the rest of the song. So yeah, that. Three or four seconds of that tattoo tattoo brings the whole song down. I think that's, you know, I've said it before. I think that song and a lot of the songs on that album could have benefited a little bit from some keyboard textures. I know people like that it's stripped down and it's raw, but I just wish it was a bigger sounding album and some keyboard textures could have done that. Uh, Loss of Control next, Martin. Uh, One of the few 
David Lee Roth songs that I actually skip when I listen to it. I do know it, you know, it's very frantic. It's kind of like the blueprint for uh, Hot for Teacher a little bit, it sounds like to me, which we'll get into in a moment, Hot for Teacher. <laughs> That's not gonna be on his list, is it? Well, <laughs> we'll find out in the next couple of minutes. Um, and the loss of control, loss of control, when they just repeat that, I, I get that it's supposed to sound like the song is losing control, the band is losing control. I just don't like it. I think it's annoying as all heck. It's The song is only about two and a half minutes long and it sounds longer to me. The loss of control seems like that part just goes on and on and on, but it's not really going on. It just seems that way. So yeah, loss of control next. Um, Second song from Women and Children first on my list, on my side. Could this be magic? Again, not an awful song, uh, but I had to pick five and this is on it. It's kind of like the Big Bad Bill song. It's it's goofy, it's Dave is hamming it up again. Here's the thing, Martin, you're going on a road trip. The car is packed. You got the top down. You're still in your driveway. You're looking for that perfect song or perfect album to kick off the road trip. You're like, I'm gonna put in some VH, man, and we're gonna go. Is Could This Be Magic the first song you're thinking about? <laughs> I'm gonna put in some Could This Be Magic and we're gonna get this off on the right start. No, this is not what you're thinking. This is way down on your list of songs you would want in that moment. So yes, that's coming in. Still, again, a little low hanging fruit, but I picked it. Now, I believe we're on a show called The Contrarians, Martin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my next pick is a little contrarian. I'm going with Hot for Teacher. And I know a lot of people are going, Lazla. How? Why? Well, let me defend it. It's It sounds like, look, I know drummers love this song. They like to dissect it. It's, it's kind of like Alex's eruption in a way. Yeah. But as a song, it, it works as a drum exercise. It works as something drummers can look at and practice and try to copy. And that you guys can discuss if there were overdubs, overdubs, did he do it all at once, blah, blah, blah. Great. But as a song, it just doesn't work for me. E e eruption works for me because A, it's short. B, it's really cool and you know inventive. And three, it works as a introduction a little bit to you really got me now. So you're anticipating it the end and then da -na 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 -na. It, it works. This is just one long song of and, and it, it's jarring at times. And I believe if a video was never made for this song, that would be kind of tossed away as a throwaway song, except for maybe musicians and drummers. It works with a video. You need Waldo. You need the band in there. What is it? Orange or pink tuxedos doing their thing. And if when you're not watching the video, and you listen to the song, what are you thinking of? The video plays in your head and the video makes the song better. So if there was no video ever made for this song, it would probably be one of my skip songs for sure. So the video makes it better. Nice, okay, all right. Well, just a few comments on that. I mean, Hot, hot for Teacher, I don't think I would include on my list, but I totally understand. Um, yeah, it, it is a bit of a throwaway. Tattoo, Tattoo, I didn't really hate when it came out as much. Um, but you know, when the, when the rest of the record happened, I realized it was a little inferior and you're right about that chorus. That's, I've got some bad choruses to talk about as well. Um, big bad bill. Yeah, you're, you're right. It's low hanging fruit, but, but it's, it's actually kind of one of the charming ones of this type. I I'll, I'll, I'll speak a little later. Uh, uh, actually, when we do the Sammy episode, this idea of Van Halen and something like Aerosmith Big Ten Inch starting the um, the idea of uh, hair metal bands having little jokey tunes on their stuff yes. and, tr and trying to be, you know, ah, look, look how funny we are and how, oh, look how not heavy this is and we're such a heavy band, right? Kind of thing, right? Um, and loss of control is one that I kind of quite respect and and can even enjoy so that's definitely one that i wouldn't put on here and could this be magic uh, i i agree with that too ne never liked that song very much um okay so my side i'm gonna kick off with uh little dreamer from van halen uh you know i remember when we heard this album clear as day i went over to my buddy forrest toop's place and we played it on the on the big yamaha 3020 with the bose 901s um 
and and we're shocked uh how good the good songs were on this album and then but then there were songs like little dreamer where we were thinking it reminded us of our recent experience you know learning about scorpion's virgin killer um you know uh, in trance to some to some extent um a few other bands like that where it felt like a peaks and valleys album where there were some things on it that you thought sounded kind of 70s and hokey and uh and then other things that were like like the very front edge of metal this album came out february 10th 1978 same day stained class came out uh you know judas priest was in a e even after hearing van halen one we still felt judas priest was in a whole different you know upper echelon from van halen but i wanted to uh to punish this record a little bit because of little dreamer and then also um you know, feel your love tonight totally feels like that sort of song to me off of this album. And so does Ice Cream Man. Um, my second selection is You're No Good from this album. So we've got the Linda Ronstadt uh, via Clint, uh, Clint Ballard, uh, Ballard Jr. cover. Um, Linda Ronstadt had like a number one hit with that song. It was a massive song for her. But, you know, uh, again, again, uh, you know, I'll get on that road trip with you, Jamie. And and uh, and You're No Good is not the first song I'm going to play. But Van Halen thought in their wisdom that they would make it the first song on Van Halen, too, which is ridiculous. Uh, even the way it starts is horrible. Uh, it it downwinds for the verse. The chorus is just very annoying with that. You're no good. You're a baby. You're no, you know, it's just so annoying. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a cover. It's not a good cover. It's performed kind of like too over the top vampy like Van Halen would do. Um, yeah. Ne never a big fan of that. Um, although I'll have to say when this album first came out, uh, it at least felt like semi a heavy metal song so it kind of fit in there there were actually lighter songs on on the album um next i've got uh hear about it later from fair warning um you know and this again just feels like the um you know could this could this be magic sort of song it's just kind of neither here nor there it's a little hokey and 70s sounding as well it's not it's not a very innovative structure to it um then we're back to van halen too for women in love dot 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 like like what is that all about right just just ri this ridiculous punctuation thing van halen did once in a while um again um it's it's a ballad but it's played loud and brutishly in cavemanny with big vampy fills at the end and big pounding drums it nothing works on it um it it again uh you know the, the bottom falls out of it for the verse. The chorus is very annoying uh, on it. You know, very different from like A Beautiful Girls, which was a soft song. You know, you know us as angry young metalheads thought that was a pretty cool song. That was all right, um, but not Women in Love. And then I'm going to end with uh, End My Side uh, with Secrets from Diver Down, uh, which is an acoustic shuffle, which is uh, two of the worst words together you can you can possibly imagine. Um, so yeah, at least it's an original, uh, on this record, but it's just, it's just, again, this sort of neither here nor there it's up tempo, but it's acoustic. It's a shuffle. I really don't like shuffles. Um, so that's my side too. I don't know any, any comments on side two. Well, I'm going to speak for quite a few people watching right now and say, I could take your side too right now, go out by the pool with a cooler and have a blast with it <laughs> but like i said it's very hard to find really bad david lee ross songs uh so yeah i see your point on a lot of them uh i do dig little dreamer you're no good you know i went years without realizing that was a remake of the linda rodstad song because it right. sounds so different you almost have to recognize the lyrics before the melody uh women in love yeah i listened to this again yesterday i never listened and noticed its faults before but i tried to put myself into your headspace and yeah the faults kind of popped out to me yeah. but secrets i've always been a sucker for secrets it's the second day beach song and what i mean by that is the first day beach you, you just got there you got a good night's sleep you know you, you're excited to be on the beach for the first day maybe put in some running with the devil and you're ready to go. Second day, little sunburnt from the day before, little hungover from the night before. You're just trying to get yourself back and you know, to feeling like yourself again, it's noon. You're sweating out that hangover, put in secrets and just kind of chill. 
and you'll get back to where you were the day before eventually. So yeah, there's my thoughts. Cool, excellent. Well, let us know in the comments below what you think of uh, our uh, our uh, Van Halen record called Jamie's Crying. And um, yeah, you know, uh, We've, we've got a Patreon situation. We've got merch. Um, so yeah, come join us. Uh, the face, We've got a Facebook page as well. Uh, so there you go. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think of our version of Jamie's Crying and let us know uh, what else you think uh, would make a horrible, horrible David Lee Roth era Van Halen album. Uh, on behalf of myself and Jamie, bye for now. <laughs>